The Toronto Police Service need the public's assistance to identify the poser bandit. If you have information, please contact the Hold Up Squad or anonymously Crime Stoppers. Good morning and uh, thank you very much for attending this media conference. Uh, I'd like to bring the uh, public's attention, and I'm looking for public assistance also, in identifying who I call the poser bandit. He's an individual who dresses up in a full Brinks outfit, uniform, including a duty belt and a firearm. And back on the 31st of December 2011, he attended the Walmart on St. Clair Avenue West in Toronto. He attended the area where the money is to be picked up and tried to obtain the cash day's receipts from the Walmart. At that point in time, the manager confronted the uh, Brinks guard, uh, challenging him for his identification, and he quickly fled empty-handed. On February 18th, 2012, this, we believe the same individual West, dressed in the uh, Brinks guard outfit, posing as a true Brinks guard in full duty belt and firearm, attended the Fu Yao supermarket on Birchmount Road, and at which point in time he indicated that he was a Brinks guard there to pick up the daily receipts, and the money was turned over to him, and he made good his escape. The troubling thing about this investigation is that this individual has put a lot of planning in place. He's arriving just before the usual pickup that the Brinks trucks would make, so he's getting there just before that they would be arriving to pick up the money and he's fleeing with the cash, obviously on one occasion, and he tried this on one other occasion. We're looking for the public's assistance in trying to identify this individual who we describe as a male white, probably 35 years of age, medium to a heavy set build, as depicted in the, the screen beside me. Uh, we're hoping that somebody who recognizes this individual can call Crime Stoppers or the Hold Up Squad, and provide us with a name for this individual. It's also a warning to the public to ensure that they're vigilant when Brinks guards or any armored guards picking up their daily receipts to ensure that they challenge these guards and individuals for their proper identification as the Walmart did on the 31st of December. He's posing as a, uh, a Brinks guard. We know that uh, uh, he's not a true Brinks guard. Uh, Brinks security has uh, worked in partnership with us on this case. We do not believe that he's a present Brinks employee. He very well could be a past employee or associated to a past employee. Uh, he's wearing the full Brinks garb outfit and, and he obviously uh, knows the, the way to handle himself with the, the public in dealing with pickups uh, as a Brinks guard. And the weapon? And the weapon? He's never pulled the firearm out. He is wearing it on his duty belt as most Brinks guards do. Well, the Walmart incident was on St. Clair Avenue West on uh, December 31st. And at that point in time, the, uh, the manager confronted the, uh, the poser and challenged him for his proper credentials, which he could not uh, present. He then left the premises to pretend to get his credentials, and he never returned. Well, what happens is uh, the, the individual, when Brinks makes pickups and deliveries, uh, there was no delivery made, which is uh, usual on some of these circumstances. So uh, the actual store management contacted Brinks security immediately after he left, saying he forgot to leave the deposit. And prior to the, the real truck arriving there, so they alerted the management that uh, the real truck has not arrived at that point in time yet. So immediately we knew that uh, this individual made off with the day's receipts. It, for all intents and purposes, we believe it's real. There's nothing to tell us that it's not real. Um, there, he's been captured on video, as you can see, so I'm hoping somebody knows by his build or has some recollection of, of him. He's got to know the security cameras, though. Absolutely. I believe he does, and that's why he's wearing this ball cap. It's, it's, uh, it's pulled down quite low in the cameras. You can see his chin. You don't get a real good face shot of him, but uh, I, would, I would agree with you. What I'm advised through Brink Security that it's a proper Brink's uniform. Does that lead you to believe that he actually may have been a past employee? And also to be in the routine, right? You think you know when to arrive before the truck. 
Well, as I said, I mean, there's a quite possibility that he could have been a past employee or he's, uh, he's gathered intelligence from a, a past employee to, uh, to carry out this. How, how much time before he would get there before the truck arrived? Like half hour, ten minutes? A short period of time. He's, uh, so there's been some homework put into place here yeah, to know the route. It wasn't, uh, the, the actual store owners are expecting the Brinks truck arrival. So uh, it's not out of, he's not coming on the wrong day. He's not coming hours too soon or hours too late. He's, he's put some homework into this, so, uh, which leads to believe that this is a quite a planned event. What was the Walmart manager's instinct on responding to questions? Well, I believe that a lot of the stores probably have proper policy to challenge individuals to ensure the credentials are, are produced when they're handing over quite a sum of money. So maybe the manager's instincts were, uh, were trigged because of that. Is that protocol? You have to ask for ID or... Well, I don't know what protocol... Up, the... I don't know what... Every, I'm sure every store, every business has their own protocol. I'm, uh, maybe it was just... Uh, there, I would think there would be some type of protocol. I'm not sure every store would have a different one. But we would hope so. Uh, so I'm telling the public that they should be doing that. Should challenging armored guards who are picking up their money to ensure they do have the proper credentials on and the proper identification. How much money was taken? I'm not going to comment on that. It was a large sum of money. It's been three months since you last, since we know of, that, that you last tried to steal money from a business. Um, so what are you looking for from the public? If, if you think maybe he's given up this ruse, right? Maybe he's on something else. I'm not sure he's given up this ruse because uh, he did get a substantial amount of money from the, the February incident. Uh, what I'm, two things I'm looking for the public's assistance on. One is to see if we can identify who this individual is so we can apprehend him. And the second is to ensure that they challenge individuals that, where they're working for the proper credentials to ensure that they're not handing money over to the posers. Any other questions? Is there any indication of that another business has been, like would you have heard another business had been robbed and suddenly the real people turned up? Absolutely. Well, um, this is a, a little bit of uh, crime prevention also. Why did it take so long to bring this to press conference to the, uh, the citizen was February the 18th? Why did it take this long to identify? Well, we did, we did have some leads that we thought were going to be uh, successful, and those leads have since uh, dried up, so we're, we're going to the public to look for their assistance in identifying this individual. One more question. Where was the surveillance camera? The, this uh, the photos here are from the Walmart store on December 31st. Is there anything distinctive um, about the suspect that people like that you want people to look at on these images? Uh, there, to me, it, it's just his build. I mean, you, you can see his face, but he seems to have a particular gait and a particular build. So I would think that if somebody recognizes uh, his whole build, they could put two and two together. We haven't seen the video. What's his gait like? He just has. He seems to have a bit of a wide gait. At least in my opinion. Okay, thank you for attending today's conference. It's not